Recently, the Tennessee Aquarium welcomed seven endangered turtles as four-eyed turtles and two bills four-eyed turtles hatched at the aquarium. And here to introduce us to these beautiful new baby turtles is senior herpetologist Bill Hughes. Good morning, Bill. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing really well. You got a couple of those turtles right there in your hand. Kind of describe which is which here. Okay, so over here, and, I, and, and this is going to be backwards. So I'm going to say my right and my left, and it'll be opposite. So anyway, this is the four-eyed turtle. Okay. The He's kind of peeking out at us. Uh, you're probably not going to see the eyes, maybe. So there, there are four spots on top of their heads, and that's where they get the names from. And it turns out as they get older, if it's a male, the spots will look different. And if it's a female, they'll, they'll keep the juvenile spot coloration. So as adults... You can look at the markings on the head and say if it's a male or a female. And then over here in this hand, I'll put you back. This is the Beals four-eyed turtle. A um, little bit smaller, a little bit different color. I don't know if you can see it. If it's in focus, the egg tooth is still visible on this guy. Um, it's really tiny, though. And, and these, are, these guys are the same. Um, as adults, the males and females have different coloration. And y'all have had great success in hatching these turtles, haven't you? Yeah, we've done okay with these over the years. Um, I don't know the grand turtle. We've hatched quite a few four-eyed turtles. The beals, not as many, but our, our adult group is not as big, and they seem a little bit more difficult to hatch. Um, we don't always get good eggs. Some of the adults are actually getting pretty old. But, you know, we hatch a few, and... and Anything's better than nothing, so we, we hatched two this year. That's pretty good. And these, these turtles, you know, I mentioned it there at the beginning, they're imperiled in the wild, and it's important that you all keep up the breeding program there, isn't it? Yeah, so we keep these kind of as an assurance colony in case, you know, something happens to the wild populations. And, um, you know, having offspring and keeping track of offspring, keeping track of the parents make, makes for, like, a viable population, so... You know, in case something happens to the wall population. And you have a new turtle nursery that you're in front of right there. We do. I don't know. I can move so you can see it. If you want to I step want aside, to folks can see it for I just a second. Decide. Yeah, there it is. Tell us about it. So what we have here are various species of turtles, some of which hatch here, actually. And I don't know if you can see it. Down here are some four-eyed turtles and some beetle turtles from last year. But part of the... Um, Part of the message here is that you know things like conservation don't happen in vacuums; they happen with partners. And so, for example, the spiny turtles up here hatched at Abilene Zoo. These uh, Rhode Island St. Nicks hatched at Zoo Knoxville. A lot of these turtles on the bottom hatched at the Turtle Survival Center in uh, South Carolina, the Turtle Survival Alliance's breeding center. So. You know, we partner with other organizations, like-minded organizations, and this gives them a place to send baby turtles to. We can raise them up, and then we can send them off to other institutions once they get a little bit of size to them. And in the meantime, you know, they're still making more turtles, and so, you know, th that's the plan. So this exhibit won't be really static over time. It's like if you come and visit, and then you come back in six months, it's, it's a good chance that a lot of these will possibly, or, or there's a good chance a lot of these will be gone and new ones will come in as, as they get bigger and we, we send them off to other places. And I see a lot of folks walking by the window out there. Has this been a, a great addition to the aquarium as far as the patrons go? I think so. People really like baby turtles. Um, and again, there's, there's really not much not to like about baby turtles. Um, and, and this gives us an opportunity to, to show a lot of different species. Um, you know, the tanks look kind of bare, but you know, it's more of a lab setting, and, and because they're not heavily planted and stuff, the turtles are happy. We can actually see the turtles, and because, you know, we have this dedicated space just for babies, we can actually have a lot of babies. And you all designated 2020 as the year of the turtle, and you're trying to raise awareness. As, as I understand it, there's over 350 species of turtles that are kind of endangered right now. So I think the grant, you know, depending on which taxonomist you talk to and, and, and all kinds of things and what's going on, um, I think the species count for, total species count for turtles is 350, 370, somewhere in that range. Um, a big percentage of those are endangered in some way. Um, 
and, and honestly, for the most part, it's because of humans. It's because of anthropogenic human, or, you know, anthropogenic influences. Humans cause it. They, they, they take the habitat. They want them for pets. They want them for food. Um, and as a herpetologist, when you see those eggs hatching, when you see those turtles coming out of the shell, that's got to bring you a sense of pride and a sense of accomplishment. Yeah, it's always exciting. You know, it just it's one of those things, and, and that whole that old uh, truism of a don't catch your don't count your eggs before they hatch. Let me try that again. <laughs> that old truism of not catch not counting okay, your eggs talk, before talk. they hatch. Sorry, my my beard is catching on the mask. <laughs> That old truism about not counting your eggs until they hatch is really true because, you know, you, you can tell if eggs are good, but just because they're good doesn't mean they're going to hatch. So, you know, we get the eggs for these two species. They seem to lay them mid-April or so, so we get the eggs. And some of them are obviously not good right away, and, and it's like, okay. But then um, some of them look promising, and usually they'll hatch. But, you know, you, you can't until they actually stick their head out of the egg and come out of the egg, you, you can't really count on it because lots of things can happen that can go wrong in that process. So one, once you're past that and you're like, you know, we're at that point where you say, hey, we hatched five of these this year and two of this, two of these this year, and they're out and they're eating and they're gaining weight and they look good, then you can kind of uh, sit back and, and rest on your laurels, so to speak, and go, hey, you know. But, but that aside, even to seeing getting eggs sometimes is just exciting. You go, hey, look, there's eggs. That's, that's all, you know, it's a promise that something cool is going to happen in a couple of months. All right. Bill Hughes, thank you so much for taking time with us, and thank you so much for sharing those turtles with us today. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. It is the brand new hatchlings there at the Tennessee Aquarium. You need to get by there and check out their new turtle nursery. It is all at the Tennessee Aquarium in Chattanooga.